Shalom and welcome, Mishpocha, to YHWHY.com. And we are in the Feast of Sukkot, or the Feast of Tabernacles. We are going to be looking at that from every point of view. Uh, if you are not familiar with Leviticus 25, please go there. There's uh, some nuggets in there on instruction. But Sukkot interwines through all of the parashahs as well as the uh, the Nabi, the prophets, and the teaching, and the Brit Hadashah. So one of the things I'm going to be looking at is how the Messiah kept the Feast of Sukkot. After all, the Gentile church has no concept whatsoever of the festival of tabernacles and its importance. Now, earlier in the Gospels, it talks about the Mashiach and him being born and then circumcised on the eighth great day of the festival. That was Shimiacharetz, and he was circumcised on that day. So, he was born during the Feast of Tabernacles. Now, we are going to look at Yohanan chapter 7. And this would have been his approximately his 30th birthday. And Yochanan is, I go to him first, because in all of the Gospels, Yochanan has a lot that seems to be missing. No, he pulled his scribe pen out and wrote on the high Shabbats, on the Moedim, on the high holy Kodesh days of Yahweh. And I'm going to look at chapter 7, and then we're going to look at the corresponding verses on every side, and we're going to find out what the New Testament, which is a renewed covenant, it's the same covenant. It is the same deity, and his name is Yahshua. Don't buy into that deception of falsehood and call upon the modern name, because that is uh, the name of abomination. Anyway, chapter 7. In the book of Yohanan, and after this, Yahshua was walking in Galil, for he did not wish to walk in Yehuda, because the Yehudim were seeking to kill him. And the festival of the Yehudim was near the festival of Sukkot. And on that, that is where you would have the festival of booths, and this is what is mentioned in Leviticus 25. So, verse 3 in chapter 7 of Yochanan, So his brothers said to him, Get away from here and go into Yehuda, so that your taught ones also see the works that you are doing. For no one acts in secret while he he himself seeks to be known openly. If you do these works, show yourself to the world. For even the brothers did not believe in him. And Yahshua therefore said to them, My time has not yet come, but your time is always ready. It is impossible for the world to hate you, but it hates me because I bear witness of it, that its works are wicked. You go up to the festival, and I am not yet going to this festival, for my time has not yet been filled. And having said this to them, he stayed in Galil. But when his brothers had gone up to the festival, then he also went up, not openly, but as it were in secret. The Yehudim therefore were seeking him at the festival, and said, Where is he? And there is was much grumbling about him among the crowd, some saying, He is good, Tov, but others saying, No. But he is leading a, the crowd astray. Well, his teachings were completely different from the Pharisees. They were based on the Torah. Uh, excuse me. Verse 13. However, no one speaks openly of him for the fear of the Yehudim and 
about the middle of the festival, Yahshua went into the set-apart place, and he was teaching. And the Yehudim were marveling, saying, How does this man know letters, not having learned? And Yahshua answering them, and said, My teaching is not mine, but his who sent me. If anyone desires to, to do his desire, he shall know concerning the teaching, whether it is from Elohim, or whether I speak for myself. He who speaks from himself is seeking his own esteem, but he who seeks the esteem of the Echad, the One, who sent him is true, and no unrighteousness is in him. Did not Moshe give you the Torah? Yet not one of you does the Torah. Why do you seek to kill me? The crowd answered and said, You have a demon. Who seeks, who seeks to kill you? And Yahshua answered and said to them, I did one work, and you all marvel. Because of this, Moshe has given you the circumcision. Though it is not from Moshe, but from the fathers, the patriarchs. And you circumcise a man on the Sabbath. If a man receives circumcision on the Sabbath, so that the Torah of Moshe should not be broken, are you wroth with me because I made a man entirely well on the Shabbat? Do not judge according to appearance, but judge with Zadok judgments, righteous judgments. Therefore, some of them of the Yehudim uh, in Jerusalem said, Is this not he who they are seeking to kill? And see, he speaks boldly, and they say none at all to him. Could it be that the rulers truly know that this is truly the Messiah? But we know where this one is from, and when the Messiah comes, no one knows where he is from. Yahshua therefore cried out in the set-apart place, teaching and saying, You both know me, and you know where I am from, and I have not come of myself, but he who sent me is true, Emet, whom you do not know. But I know him because I have, I am from him, and he sent me. So they were seeking to seize him, but no one laid hands on him because his hour had not yet come. And many of the crowd believed in him and said, When the Messiah comes, he shall he do more signs than these which this one did. And the Pharisees heard the crowds muttering these matters concerning him, and the Pharisees and the chief priests sent officers to seize him. Therefore, Yahshua said to them, Yet a little while I am with you. Then I go to him who has sent me. You shall seek me, and you shall not find me. And where I am, you are unable to come. The Yehudim therefore said to themselves, Where is he about to go that we shall not find him? Is he about to go in the dispersion among the Greeks and teach the Greeks? What is the word which he said, You shall seek me, and you shall not find me? And where I am you are unable to come. And on the last day, the great day Shimeacharetz of the festival, Yahshua stood up and cried out, saying, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me, and let him who believes in me drink. As the scripture said, out of his innermost shall flow rivers of living water. And this he said concerning the Ruach, which those believing in him were about to receive for the set-apart 
the set-apart Ruach was not yet given because Yahshua was not yet esteemed. Yohanan chapter 7 verse 40 Many uh, from the crowd, when they heard the word, then said, This truly is the Nabi, the prophet. Others said, This is the Messiah. But others said, Does the Messiah then come from Galil? Question mark. Did not the scripture say that the Messiah comes from the seed of David? And from the village of Beth Lechem, where David, David was. Now, it says that in, let's see, just a second, we've got many different prophecies that this whole verse has touched on. These verses throughout the scriptures that talk about Sukkot, these are answered here by the Messiah. The big questions are being asked. And many of the Yuhadim realize this truly is the Messiah. The elders, the Sanhedrin, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, a few did see the truth and go to him, as in Nicodemus. But many of them rejected the Messiah, as they do today in all their re religiosities, whether it is the Gentile church or the Jews, they still refuse to call upon the name of Yahuwah. And they replace it, saying it's too holy. They keep not the commandments, and they do not know what the Sukkot is. And that time to have tabernacle with the invisible king of Israel that walks in the midst of his people, as it's spoken of in the book of Jubilees, Yevelim. That is what Sukkot is about. And I also want to refer back to a few other things in this uh, teaching. Because earlier, uh, the Messiah, when the Messiah took Yohanan, Matithiahu, and Yaakob up to the mount, and there was the the transfiguration. And if you put all of the Gospels side by side, and they are not mentioned in the book of John, even though he was there, because he writes on the high Shabbats. But there were some things that happened. He was anointed as the Messiah. He was told what was to be come in for him. He was informed by Eliyahu and Moshe that he was to be betrayed like he didn't already know it. It was already quoted in the scripture. And then, for the next few days, he was teaching his disciples on the questions they asked and he was answering them. He may, the question may be come up in one of the Gospels and he answers it in another narrative, say by Luke. And if you don't put all of those together, you're going to miss the whole context. And the key verse is the, the verses, because they're in all, five, or all four books, and it is the feeding of the 5,000 that happened just about 10 days before these events. That would have been at Rosh Hashanah, and this sets up all of the different things. When he was out in the wilderness and he said, come on boys, Yochanan the immerser, my cousin has been beheaded by Herod. Let us retreat into a desolate and uh, a wilderness. And when they get there, he ends up having compassion on a flock that had no shepherd. And he took compassion on them and taught them. 
and then he fed them. This is Yom Teruah. And then he went into the Day of Atonement, where he and his three disciples that were with him, Matithiahu, Yaakob, and Yohanan. And it says that they fell asleep under the weightiness of the conversation. So we will be looking that subsequently in the next few minutes and the next few years and millennium. We have a lot of time to look at this. Now, personally, I think as far as the time that we have, all of the prophecies are being fulfilled for the Akaret Ha'amin. I believe we are at the end of the Jubilees and that we are coming into the 7,000th year with, with Yahweh a day is like a thousand years and a thousand years is like a day. He is not slow in keeping his promises as some understand slowness. He is patient with us, not wanting any to perish but have eternal life. Just before the events that we have talked about, the disciples went out and they went to Mount Gerizim and the surrounding Samaritan villages. And when they went back to Yeshua and they were discouraged and they said they didn't receive the message. Shall we call down fire as Eliyahu did? And the Messiah rebukes them and said, I did not come to destroy men's life, but that they might have life and saved lives. That's what he came to do. People do not realize when they are not worshiping Yahweh, they are worshiping the other mighty one of the world, which represents death. That DBA of that entity is G-O-D. And the scriptures and the Messiah, they all state, do not call upon any other names of mighty ones. Call upon the name of Yahweh and his salvation, his Shua, Yahoshua. There is no other name under heaven and earth which men might have salvation. Now, let us take a look at these same events in the other Gospels. You... Now, please, turn to Lucas 9.51. Uh, Luke 9.51, and this is where he said to another, follow me. But before I go there, we have to realize that this takes place after the Messiah heals a man that had an unclean spirit that came convulsing down and falling into the fire, etc. And there were some events that happened that he ultimately says, and the reasoning arose among men who might be the greater of them. And Yahshua, having seen the reasoning of their heart, took a little child and placed him by his side and said to them, whoever receives this little child in my name receives me. And whoever receives me receives him who sent me. For he who is least among you all shall be great. And Yochanan answered and said, Master, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we forbid him because he does not follow with us. But Yeshua said to him, Do not forbid him, for he who is not against us is for us. And it came to be when the days of his taking up were being completed, even he set his face to go up to Jerusalem. And we just talked about that from the book of John. So let's go now. We'll start in verse uh, 56 of Luke chapter 9. 956. And here it says, For the son of Adam... Ben Adam did not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And they went on to another village that we just mentioned in the book of Yochanan.
Lucas 9.56 For the son of Adam did not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And they went on to another village. And it came to be, as they journeyed on the way, that someone said to him, Master, I shall follow you wherever you go. And Yahshua said to him, The foxes have holes, and the birds of the heavens have nests. But the son of Adam has nowhere to lie his head. And he said to another, Follow me. But he said, Master, let me first go and bury my father. And Yahshua said to him, Let the dead bury their own dead, but you go and announce the reign of Elohim. And another said, Master, I shall follow you, but let me first say goodbye to those in my house. But Yahshua said to him, No one, having put his hand to the plow, and looking back, is fit for the reign of Elohim. And then, in chapter 7, he appointed seventy to go out two by two, where he himself was about to go. They were preparing the way for him. And he said to them, The harvest indeed is great, but the workers are few. Therefore pray the master of the harvest to send out workers for the harvest. And later, down in verse 16, he says, He who hears you hears me. He who rejects you rejects me. And he who rejects me rejects him who sent me. And the seventy returned with joy, saying, Master, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan falling out of the heavens as lightning. See, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and none at all shall hurt you. But do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names have been written in the Shamaim, in the heavens. And in that hour, Yahshua exalted in the spirit, the Ruach, and said, I praise you, Father, Master of Shamaim and Eretz, heaven and earth, that you have hidden these matters from clever and learned ones and did reveal them to babes. Yes, Abba, Father, because thus it is well-pleasing in your sight. All has been delivered to me by my Father, and no one knows who the Son is except the Father, and who the Father is except the Son, and he to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. And turning to his taught ones, he said separately, Baruch, blessed are the eyes that see what you see. For I say to you that many prophets, the Nabi, and sovereigns, the kings, have wished to see that you have seen and have not seen it, and to Shema, to hear what you hear and have not heard it. And see, a certain one of them learned in the Torah stood up, trying him, and saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit the everlasting life? And he said to him, What has been written in the Torah? How? Do you read it? And he answering, You shall love Yahweh your Elohim with all your heart, and with all your being, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, as it is spoken of in Deborim chapter 6. And to love your neighbor as yourself, as it is spoken of in Vayakra 19.18. And he said to him, You have answered rightly. Do this, and you shall live, as it's spoken of in Vayakra, Leviticus 18.5. But 
he wishing to declare himself righteous, said to Yeshua, And who is my neighbor? And Yeshua said, A certain man was going down to Yerushalayim, to Jericho, and fell among robbers, who, both stripping and beat them, him, went away, leaving him for dead. And by a coincidence, a certain Cohen was going down the way, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And likewise, a Lavi, also, when he came to that place, seeing, passed by on the other side. But a certain Shamaronian, man of Shamron, journeying came upon him, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him. And he went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring oil and wine, and having placed him on his own beast, he brought him to, the, to an inn and looked after him. And going out to the next day, he took out two denarii, give them to the innkeeper, and said to him, Look after him, and whatever more you spend, I shall repay you when I return. Who then of these men do you think was a neighbor to him who fell among the robbers? And they answer him, and he goes on to uh, give them more information. But with this verse, I want us to go back to Isaiah chapter 58. So, we'll turn back. Where is Yeshiyahu? Yeshiyahu, right before Yermiyahu. And we'll go to chapter 58. Now, I've read this so many times. There's so much in this. I thought I was talking about the regular Shabbats, but it is not. It is speaking about the day of Yom Kippur. And for the Messiah, that was the day of transfiguration. That was the Yom Kippur on that particular year in the New Testament. But I'm taking you back to Yeshiyahu chapter 58. There's so much in there. Uh, cry aloud, do not spare, lift up your voice like the shofar. Declare to my people their transgressions, and the house of Yaakov their sins. Yet they seek me day by day, and delight to know my ways, as a nation did righteousness, and did not forsake the right rulings of their Elohim. They ask me right rulings of righteousness, and delight in drawing near to me. Yahweh is being facetious here. They say... Why have we fasted, and you have not seen? Why have we afflicted our beings, and you took no note? Look, in the days of your fasting, you find pleasure and drive on all your labors. Look, you fast for strife and contention, and to strike with the fist of wrongness. You ha do not fast as you do this day to make your voice heard on high. And I invite you to really, really look back at Isaiah 58, as well as the whole book of Yeshiyahu in context. So many places in the scriptures, from Genesis to Revelation, Yahweh says, if you do not hear my instructions, and obey my instructions, I will not hear your prayers. If your prayers are in the name of another mighty one, he will not be obliged to hear your prayers. These verses are first talking about the voice of the shofar, which, as far as I can see, is Yochanan the Immerser. And that is the connection. He was the voice in the wilderness crying, Repent, Tishuvah, turn back to Yahuwah. He was the voice of Eliyahu crying out in the wilderness to repent, turn back to Yahuwah. Thank you for joining the words of Yahuwah and YHWHY. Shalom.